Hello traders, welcome to the LFB and our global video charting review for Tuesday the 5th of April 2011. My name is Marco Haig from the LFB Trade Desk, hope I find you very well. We do have to point out that any form of trading and investing does involve substantial risk and we ask that traders use due diligence before taking information from the video and we ask that you read the disclaimers that are posted to the website looking at the s p 500 on a one hour chart where you can see the drops down on our intraday swing points that's where a new 24-hour session begins global traded markets have entered into a sideways period of trade having absorbed what is historically a volatile time that follows us non-farm payroll releases on the first friday of each month the reaction in April, however, has done no more than create a small ripple of movement contained in very tight trading channels. Equities, commodities and currencies are all trading at similar levels that they finished at in March. Anticipation of quarter one earnings season may dominate the near term outlook and also allow the current trading channel to hold steady. The global equity benchmark, this S&P 500 futures contract, will need to break above 1345 or below 1305 to instigate a response from the global market that would force participants into the trading arena. The first week of April has seen the lowest volume level since just before the equity market crash in 2008 and nobody wants to see that. Let's hope this is not a precursor to something like that without even the high frequency trading algorithms wanting to participate price action will remain volatile only on an intraday basis and will likely reverse as quickly as price action breaks so looking at the s p 13.45 or 13.05 are going to be the numbers to watch Looking at the gold market, precious metal traders held gold and silver above support in the near term. We're going to see a lot of these blue lines there, the 20-day simple moving averages on our charts. But if you do look at gold, if you keep a tight stop on gold trade, not invest in trade, you must be banking in stages because gold's got a propensity at the moment to have some vicious intraday pullbacks that are getting bought. But you do need a wider stop on gold if you're not banking on the way up. So the way to probably play it is to trade gold, bank early, bank often, and then look at silver as your precious metal holding that you invest in. Because silver's got a more expensive cost of carry. With futures contracts, you can trade the contract up until the delivery date. So you can get in and out of the futures contractors most traders know but then you do become liable for delivery when the contract expires with gold your bullion cost your cost of carry your cost of warehousing your cost of insurance your cost of delivery is built into your investment with silver you've got the extra cost vat that needs to be paid on silver so you're better off probably trading gold and investing in silver so Keep your tight stops on gold because of the bigger pullbacks. Bank early, bank often. Don't be afraid to bank as profit comes. And then maybe leave your silver trade to run on the longer term. Looking at oil, both crude oil, WTI, West Texas Intermediate, and North Sea, Brent crude, are holding very bullish price action points both very very well supported by their 20-day moving average and both in a very strong up trend the interesting aspect of global commodity trade is that the us dollar has not lost ground at the same percentage rate that commodities have moved higher there's a disconnect between dollar valuations and global commodity trade as the need to hedge dollar manipulation by the us administration and federal reserve empowers the interbank currency wars that are currently bubbling under the surface and you know that currency wars are going on from an interbank perspective when you get as many central bankers as we're seeing at the moment wheeled out to jawbone and extol the virtues of interest rate increases or not
Major currency pairs are also trading in benign fashion ahead of the week that's loaded with very important economic releases. Take a look at euro dollar, which is an inverted dollar index. Euro dollar makes up 60% of the dollar index. Anticipation of an interest rate increase from the European Central Bank on Thursday, coupled with the thought process that leans towards the Bank of England possibly following suit at some stage over the next couple of months, has created very tight trading channels which replicate the overall market trading activity. Euro dollar breaking 42.50 going long or 40. 50 going short is likely to draw in reactionary trades from the wider market that could then create a sustainable move of three to four hundred pips either way and that move would be instigated by either the market anticipating no rate increase from the ECB the market heavily anticipating that rate increase ahead of the actual press conference or the ECB on Thursday disappointing one way or the other with not enough of an increase or no increase at all. So a lot of anticipation is going to be building during the course of this week. Looking at the commodity based pairs in regard to both continents, Australia and Canada being rich in commodities, the Australian dollar may lose ground in the near term as the markets absorb the fact that the Reserve Bank of Australia is very unlikely to touch interest rates until the early part of 2012. An inflection point on Aussie dollar will be the next test of support at 10250. Overnight, we heard the Reserve Bank of Australia hold interest rates at 4.75, which is a very healthy rate. So there's a reason that the Australian dollar would get bought in times of risk tolerance. But as the markets go through phases of risk aversion, equities getting sold, precious metals, metals getting sold, it's the Australian dollar that's probably going to get impacted more than most. Looking at the Canadian dollar, we had the Bank of Canada's economic outlook, business outlook come through during the course of this week. But we've got to be careful with the Canadian dollar. It's going to need to soon find support of the market's anticipation of some kind of tightening measures from the Bank of Canada if the Canadian dollar is going to continue its appreciation against the dollar below 96 on dollar CAD. So dollar CAD, US dollar against the Canadian, dollar's the first name, the US dollar is the first named. Dollar CAD going lower below 96 is probably going to need the support of some kind of confirmation from the Bank of Canada that they're going to do something with interest rates ahead of the Federal Reserve. That would push this currency pair lower as the Canadian dollar gains in value. The two interest rate connected pairs, dollar yen, which as we can see is in a bullish mood at the moment. The US dollar has found buyers or the Japanese yen had found sellers and probably a lot to do with the Bank of Japan's intervention over the course of the last week or so. And then looking at the Swiss franc, which is the second one connected, you can see the Swiss franc hasn't had to absorb that natural disaster which is a tragedy and we send white light out to everybody that's affected by that the Swiss franc has been able to maintain a very tight sideways channel. But these two pairs have moved in disjointed fashion, both impacted by the fact that the 10-year US Treasury note is now into the eighth session of sideways crawl that's got note values holding 120.50. 120.50 on Treasury notes is at the low end of its trading range. With the yield values, when the note value drops down, 120.50, the yield value rises and they're pushing into interbank interest rates even higher. It would seem that although the Federal Reserve is a long way from being able to raise overnight or discount window interest rates, the bond market is prepared to push note values lower and by default push 10-year yields and those connected interest rates higher. Those connected interest rates would be your mortgage, interest rate charges, credit card, and interbank lending. In general, traders are witnessing a very sloppy, overlapping period of trade 
that really only has any sustainable price movement when the European futures market opens for trade around 2, 2 a.m. East Coast time, and then again as Wall Street trade absorbs any U.S. economic releases at 8.30 and 10 a.m. East Coast time. Patience is going to be key at these inflection points with tenured traders very much aware that cash is also a viable position to hold during certain times of any trading year. The LFB trade desk will send signals and alerts on global equity, interest rate and commodity trade along with intraday updates on the major currency pairs. As it stands at the moment, bank early, bank often and be prepared to sit and wait rather than be too reactive to the intraday noise that's going on at this point in time. Thank you for making the LFB a part of your trading day. We really do appreciate the feedback that you give us. If you do have anything to share with us outside of spam that's related to the currency markets or the video, you can contact the trade team at alerts, A-L-E-R-T-S, alerts at the LFB.com.